Hey guys, what is up and welcome to the channel for today's video and in today's video we are going to talk about carburetors. So it seems like anyone who ends up buying one of these Apollo dirt bikes that you always need to end up replacing the carburetor. Now you get your new carburetor, you stick it in and it still doesn't quite run right. In today's video we're going to go over and talk about every single thing that's inside of that carburetor so you can learn how to properly tune and adjust your carburetor. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to stick the carb up on the bench, we're going to pull it apart, show you step by step and explain every single piece of the carburetor so you guys can understand everything from what the pilot jet to the main jet to the float to the carb bowl. You can understand all the lingo, understand how they work and how you can tune them to adjust it so your bike runs as good as it can. Now when we look at our carb here, it's gonna be made up of seven main parts. The first one's gonna be the main jet. The second we're talking about is the pilot jet. The third is the float, the float hanger and the float valve. The fourth is the choke. The fifth is gonna be the throttle needle and clip. The sixth is gonna be the fuel screw. And the seventh and last is gonna be the idle screw. So let's go ahead, let's pop this carb open and we're gonna talk about everything in detail so you can understand how to tune it. So here we have our carburetor laid out on the bench. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start disassembly and we're gonna talk about each part as we pull it apart. And we're gonna go ahead by removing the spring. Now this would normally be on the throttle cable attached to the bike. And inside of there, you have the throttle slide. And the throttle slide is connected to the throttle clip, which has this little W type spacer for the spring. And then we're gonna have the throttle needle with the actual little clip on it here on the very end. You guys can see there, we got the needle with the clip. I'm gonna lay it all out here so you guys can visibly see this. The next part of disassembly is gonna be removing the three screws that are Phillips on the bottom and this is gonna remove the carb bowl. Now inside of the carb bowl, you're gonna see your float and you're gonna have your pilot jet and your main jet inside of here. So to start, we're gonna pull this here off the top of the main jet. Inside the hanger of the float, there's this tiny pin here. To be able to remove the float, we need to be able to push this pin out. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a needle and we're gonna push this guy out here like so. And then the slide's gonna come off. Now we can go ahead and we can pull the float up and off. And as we pull it off, you can see here we got the hanger and that sits down on the end of the float. And that sits on the float's hanger. And this is the float valve here. Next, looking inside the carb, here's where the float valve would sit. Here's where your main jet is. Here's your pilot jet. And here is the fuel screw. To remove your main jet, put a screwdriver in. I'm gonna turn and loosen that and back your main jet out. Just like that. Then next to it, here we have our pilot jet. Go ahead, use a flathead screwdriver. And you can screw this guy out. Now that is your carb fully disassembled. Now all the parts are removed. You can go ahead and pull this guy out here, which is what holds the main jet, um, but you don't need to do that. This is gonna be how you're gonna go over your carb. If you need to clean your carb out, you're gonna wanna pull it down to this level and clean out all these holes here in the carb. If you have bogging issues on your dirt bike, this is what might be your problem is these holes might be clogged up as well as your both your pilot jet and your main jet might be clogged. Next, here we have on the side of the carburetor, we have our idle screw. This is gonna change our idle. Now the first part of the carburetor that we're talking about when we're talking about tuning, now this is your main jet here. It's very tiny, but very important. The main jet is what provides the fuel at 80% to wide open throttle. The fuel flows up and throughout the needle jet into the throat of the carburetor. When changes in air density are significant, the main jet will need to be replaced. Now when we talk about going up in size and jet, you guys can see here, we got a whole bunch of different pilot jets, which are these long skinny guys. And then we got a whole bunch of different little main jets here. So on the side of them, I know you won't be able to see this, but there's gonna be little tiny numbers on the sides of the jets, and that's gonna read how much fuel flows out through them. So the higher the number, the more fuel flows through it. So if your bike is running lean, you need to up your size of your jet. If it's running rich, you can downsize the size of your jet. So if you are having issues with throttle response at wide open, likely the culprit is gonna be your main jet, and you're gonna need to change that guy out. The second piece we're gonna go over and talk about is the pilot jet. Now, what does the pilot jet do? The pilot jet handles the mixture from idle to 15 to 20 percent throttle. Air comes in through the front of the carburetor where the choke is, drawing up fuel through the pilot with a vacuum that is created as the air flows through the pilot circuit. The pilot circuit is just the innards of the carburetor. So if you are having issues with idling uh, or the bike starting, the culprit might be your idle jet, otherwise known as the pilot jet. Now the next couple pieces we're talking about is the float and the float hanger and valve. So these black pieces here is what is known as the float. This piece here with the little tiny hanger of a 
tongue on it. This is what's known as the hanger. And this piece here is what's known as the valve. Now this is what controls fuel from the tank into the carburetor. So as this tiny valve goes down into this black hole and plugs it, that's what's stopping or allowing fuel to come from your fuel tank into the carburetor. The float is designed to automatically regulate the supply of fuel into the carb. As it suggests by its name, the float, it needs to float in fuel. So it's usually made of hollow plastic or metal or fuel resistant foam. The float hanger controls how far down the float valve will sit down in the pilot circuit. Here's our pilot circuit. The float valve, which sits on this hanger, is moved by the float. Depending on the bend of the float hanger will depend on how far this sits down. So if you're having any issues where the carb's not taking fuel, it's because this is not set up correctly. So it's either your fuel hanger is bent or this might be in incorrectly, or maybe you have a float that has a crack in it. So this is taking on gasoline and filling up and no longer floating. Now, when you have this installed in your carburetor, you want this to be sitting level. You don't want it sitting tilted down. You don't want it sitting tilted up. You need this thing to be sitting at a, a flat horizontal level and that's going to actuate correctly and uh, release the right amount of fuel into your carburetor. And as the fuel rises inside the bowl, the float will rise and shut off. Boom. And it hits that level and then it's going to shut off fuel supply to the carb, which it's going to shove this little tiny needle valve up into the pilot circuit, which is going to be what shuts off the fuel flow. Once the bowl is full, the float will limit fuel draw from the fuel tank. Now the next piece we're going to go over and talk about is the choke. So what is a choke? It's simply a way to actuate the butterfly valve that's in the front of the carburetor. Now what does the butterfly valve itself do? This is what controls airflow into the carburetor. So air goes in through the choke and the float side and out through here into the intake and into your intake port on the engine. The choke valve reduces the pressure inside the throat which causes a proportionally greater amount of fuel to be pushed from the main jet of the combustion chamber during cold running temperatures. When the choke is turned on, it has the butterfly valve closed all the way to make it very, very rich to help the bike start up. Now, once the bike's running, you need that air to keep it from stalling out from being too rich. So when you open the choke, it's gonna open that butterfly valve to allow all the airflow to mix in with all the fuel you have coming from the main jet and the pilot jet. Now, the next piece we have is the needle and clip. We can see there are a whole bunch of little grooves on the end of this needle, and those grooves are where the C-clip can snap into. Now, this needle is what controls your throttle response when you snap your wrist and how the throttle slide actuates inside the top of the carb. So normally this pin sits down inside of here and when that sits down in here and you pull the throttle, this is sliding up and down in the top of your carburetor here. So as you slide up and down, the hole that's inside the carb is gonna become plugged not plugged, plugged, not plugged, as you slide it up and down through the throttle slide there. This is what's controlling your revs. Now the needle is tapered and has a smaller diameter at the bottom than it does at the top. As the needle's position changes within the jet up or down, the opening increases or decreases because the diameter of the taper changes within the fixed diameter of the nozzle. This is how fuel is regulated at certain throttles. So if the slide is all the way up at wide open throttle, the smallest diameter is inside the needle jet. Now this is where your adjustments come in. If you take this clip off and move it up or down on this needle, it's going to change how your air comes in when you're wrapping on the throttle. So taking the clip and moving it up is going to lower the needle, which is going to make it leaner. Moving the clip down will move the needle up, making it richer. So this can help if you have, say you go to, you're rolling on the throttle and then you snap it at the end and it's bogging. This could be have to do with the fact that your clip is in the wrong position. Now, a quick tip when someone says to lower your needle, that just means to have a leaner setting. And when someone says to raise the needle that means to have a richer mixture. Now this is fine tuning in your carburetor in areas that you ride the most. Now how often are you riding at wide open throttle? Not that often but how often are you riding at 70% throttle? Pretty often and that's where tuning your needle is going to come into play. Now the next piece is going to be your fuel screw. Now this fuel screw is located on the bottom. Now if you're looking at your Apollo RFZ it may look slightly different as I have an extended fuel screw that sticks out. Yours is going to be countersunk in this piece but that is where your fuel screw is and this is going to be what adjusts your fuel Fuel. So this is an air fuel mixture screw controlling how much air mixes with the fuel. Tightening the screw in weakens the air and fuel mixture and decreases the amount of fuel flowing to the engine. Tightening the screw is also called making the fuel screw mixture leaner. If you need to lean your bike, 
screw this in. If you need to richen your bike, screw it out. And the last piece on the carburetor is your idle screw. Now this controls exactly that. This is what controls your idle speed. Pretty much all it's doing is controlling the air fuel mixture at an idle. This screw has a taper on the end and as you screw it out, the taper gets smaller and allows more fuel to pass. To set your idle, you wanna make sure your bike is op operating temperature and that you have the choke set off. Now I hope you guys have learned something in today's video on how a carburetor works. And if you guys did, make sure you guys go down, hit that like button, click subscribe while you guys are there, ring that bell notification so you guys don't miss when we post our next video. And I will see you guys in the next one. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Peace out.